trying to get Facebook up so I can share the stream myself. Um, but it doesn't seem to want to cooperate with me this morning. So let me see uh, on my monitor where we are. Uh, restart that. There we go. I don't know why my computer is so slow this morning. Nevertheless, uh, we're going to bring you the real like we always do about this time. I go for mine. Uh, put go for mine in the chat, man. If you excited about going for yours this morning, you're excited about building your legacy. You're excited about transforming your life, uh, your family's life for future generations to come. Put in the chat, I go for mine. Yeah, this thing is killing me this morning. Uh, same thing for you guys on YouTube. Go ahead and type in the chat where you're from. Name of your business or your brand that you're building. Uh, give us a shout out. You never know. Uh, the woman on the today's show, uh, she is going to literally help thousands of other small businesses by putting them um, in her 500 franchise stores across the country. So you, you don't want to be shy about your brand uh, and connecting and engaging with the show because you never know. She might want um, to connect with you and your brand. Uh, and help you uh, if you make a product or serve or have a, a particular set of skills. You never know, man. You never know. All right. So finally, I'm able to share this to my own timeline and own wall. There we go. All right. So now I can kill this. And I'm going to bring up her website real quick. So that I can show you all of their different brands. All right, all right, all right. So uh, let's officially start the show. And I'm not going to officially start with the intro music, but I do want to let you guys know. Uh, do me a huge favor if you're checking this out on YouTube. For those of you who do not know me, I am H. Cortez, the one and only financial health mentor to the black community, everybody's favorite fatherpreneur, where I do my absolute best to bring practical yet proven wealth building strategies to working men and women all over this great nation of ours. It is truly an honor, privilege, and a blessing to come to you live and direct from the Generational Wealth Building Conference uh, studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. And if you, my friend, are not familiar with uh, the Generational Wealth Building Conference or have registered for uh, the Generational Wealth Building Conference, you want to go to wealth.joincortezenow.com. Uh, I'm talking about it, it's, it's literally going to be groundbreaking and history making what Evan Jefferson and the uh, Black Billionaires Club are doing. So you absolutely want to make sure that you get yourself registered. There's uh, workshops for the kids to learn entrepreneurship. There's workshops for the women. He's got a powerful, powerful uh, 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 woman's empowerment coach who went from welfare to a millionaire. And she's going to teach the women how to do it. Uh, there's going to be a brunch on Sunday. I mean, go to wealth.joincortezenow.com and get all the details and purchase your tickets right i don't know if they have any more weekend passes available at 99 dollars. if not then uh you'll have to just go ahead and grab your weekend pass at uh 149 but nevertheless don't delay because uh they only have a limited number of those tickets and then you will have to pay the at the door price of 199 uh but this is going to be an amazing conference get there network with other like-minded people who are going to help you uh, take your brand and your business and your family's legacy to the next level. Uh, and, it's, and it's that simple. Uh, so uh, people tend to not invest in themselves because they don't value themselves. They don't invest in their future because they can't see their future. Well, if you see your future and you see the legacy that's available for you to be for you to put into place, 
uh, in and for your future, then you've got to be willing to invest in that. And this is a great opportunity. So April 6th through the 8th, uh, you got plenty of time to book some flights and get them at good prices because it's a little far out. But it will be up on us before you know it. So do not delay. Do not procrastinate. Do not hesitate. Go to wealth. JoinCortezNow.com. You get all the details on this wonderful, wonderful event, uh, and you want to be a part of it. And if you're a business owner and you can't make it to the event, then the least you can do is contact Evan uh, or go to that site, and you will see the ability to uh, advertise, buy some ad space, uh, promote and market, and share the event uh, on your timelines and with your network. That's another way that you can help this event be a huge, huge success. So check us out on. YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you have not already subscribed to the channel. Um, and uh, make sure you rate the show. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Doesn't make me know, never mind. But rate the show and then make sure that you uh, comment, uh, like, and uh, share uh, the show as well. Same thing with you guys on Facebook, man. If you have not already subscribed or liked the fan page, hit the like button, turn on the notifications, and then share today's show. You guys know that's the price of admission to get all of this free game that we're about to give you. Uh, the price of admission is for you to share uh, the stream, uh, and that's all that we uh, really ask of you. So let me pull up my monitor so I can see your comments. Let's see who we have in the building in the place all right all right all right so let me see who do we have in the place augusta georgia checking in uh soul tree sounds auto sales i like that uh let's see who else do we have in the place uh currently in johnson pa uh karen gandy is in uh future leaders llc personal economy coach body babazel in the building uh and logics minds is also uh, in the building. Guys, you want to interact with the show, comment, let us know where you're from. Uh, but we're going to not delay this thing any further, man, because last time I had this young lady on, uh, an hour just was not long enough. So let me get right down to business uh, and let me uh, present to some and introduce to others the founder of Black Mama Brands, Black Mama Vodka, Black Mama Tea and Cafe, uh, and uh, the lady who's providing the uh, investment opportunity of a lifetime, and she's going to break how, break down how all of this stuff works. So, without further ado, let me introduce to you guys Vanessa Braxton. What is going on, Queen? What's up, Martin? What's up? <laughs> hey, not much, not much, man. We just just. Uh, loving everything that you do, man. You know, we're following your story. Uh, I, I love it that you uh, share with me everything that's going on and I can rebroadcast that stuff and really uh, put it out there and let people know that this ain't no joke, man. We ain't we ain't playing with this thing. So real quick, before we get into all of the meat and potatoes, uh, for those who are checking us out for the first time, go ahead and tell everybody who you are and a little bit about uh, that that beautiful logo that you got sitting on your shirt, man. What is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell everybody who you are and uh, what you got going on, and, and give us a little bit of the background too, because I think it's important for people to understand. Right. We're talking about generational wealth, and had your father not been uh, astute financially and put certain principles and things into you, you wouldn't be where you are today. So we, we have a bunch of people who have an opportunity to sacrifice this generation so the next generation don't have to worry about this. So we, uh, we, we got some people who may not take a company public, but just with this information and we start making some changes, we might raise some children who take companies public. So talk about all of that for me real quick. Not might, you will. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Might, you will, definitely. Well, you know... I, of course, well, for those who may not know, I'm CEO, president of Black Mama Baca. Um, I'm the only black-owned distillery. I have two manufacturing facilities. And you know what? I'm also <coughs> the only black-owned tea manufacturer. So I manufacture tea bags, you know, not just like beverage teas, mm -hmm. actual tea bags, you know. And I also make Black Mama Agave, you know, and Black Mama Simple Syrups. It's all organic. It's gluten free. I'm kosher certified, non GMO. So I'm in that healthy space. Mm -hmm. And basically, just having black, you know, 
Let me see. What's tomorrow? I think on the 13th is going to be my fifth year. That's when we, we launched Black Mama Vodka mm -hmm. five years ago. Wow. I did a pre, it was the pre-Oscar party. Nice. But I was also the sponsor for the Oscars with Seth. You know, mm -hmm. so it was really great doing that. And, and mm -hmm. a lot of people was reaching out to me. It was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I've been following you and buying your vodka for five years. And it's still <laughs> right. around. <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. You know, which is really, really good and refreshing. But what I've done is that I've established that company very well mm -hmm. in terms mm -hmm. of the legacy of my children. Mm -hmm. Because the only reason why I started Black Mama Vodka was because... I wanted to have a physical product and a physical location as a distillery to pass over to my kids mm. in my life. Mm -hmm. And so I've done that. You know, I'm partners with a distillery in Oregon. Their facility is here in New York. is mine, totally all mine. Mm -hmm. And what I did was I've expanded the brand. Mm -hmm. You know, I make a chai tea vodka, green tea vodka. You know, it's all tea basically infusions, mm -hmm. no chemicals. And that's what people like. But because I had so many teas, mm -hmm. I said, well, let me just start Black Mama Tea. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I needed this thing. You, you end up having product and you have too much of it. So what you gonna do? Right. Sell it. Right. And I said, all right, I'm gonna just sell these teas and just, you know, put a label on it. And it was the loose tea. Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. I started looking into the tea bag. Mm -hmm. And I started looking into the machinery. And that's the beauty when you own your own when stuff. You own, right? yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> own, please, people. I don't have a cuss jar. I don't need one in my house. Right. <laughs> that's the issue when you own your mm -hmm. own stuff mm -hmm. because you can just come out with a product. Yep. And yep. buy it. Mm -hmm. You know what the machinery? And I said, well, you know what? Let me start looking into manufacturing the actual tea bag. Mm -hmm. And when I said actual tea bags, it was epiphany. Whereas, all right, I got the loose teas. Everybody's doing loose teas. You know, I'll make my own tea bag. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that ended up developing into me patenting my own tea bag. Wow. You know, wow. Because of the simple fact that the material I started using, mm -hmm. as I mentioned before, Right. And I said, okay, I'm going to make my own tea bag. Mm -hmm. But when you start to develop your own products because you own your own stuff. That's right. You see? <laughs> That's the key. You own That's the key. your own stuff. That's the key. You don't have to worry about, oh, I got to go to a co-pack. No. Mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. you, you create it right then and there. And then you're able to write these formulas and packaging. I have a journal, mm -hmm. which is for my children. So that way, it's for generations to come, just like Coca-Cola. Yeah, yeah. You know, Coca-Cola been there for, what, 200 years? Yeah. Their family still has the recipe. And and that's intellectual property, and we don't even look at it like that, man. Right. And I want you to talk... Am I on mute? I can't hear you. Oh, no, that was me. You're not on mute. That was me. That was my fault. Yeah. Uh, so, so, but that's intellectual property. Those recipes and and those things that you're putting down, that is the company right there, right? A lot of people don't realize that's why Coca Cola is worth a hundred billion dollars because of that recipe. It ain't the equipment. It ain't. So, I want you to talk something. Uh, uh, touch on this real quick too. Uh, we're gonna get to the ownership piece because that is very important. But a lot of people have heard it said that millionaires and wealthy people all have multiple streams of income. And I think people are chasing multiple streams of income, but they don't understand synergistic alignment. You didn't go start chasing streams of income outside of what you do and things that are totally unrelated. You said, hey, I have a company that produces tea infused vodka. I'm sourcing my teas from the farms and now I have excess tea. Right. Let me take that and create another stream, but it's in alignment with my tea infused vodka. It's not something totally unrelated. And I think that's the part that people miss 
And instead yeah. of having multiple streams, they end up with multiple puddles because ain't nothing going on in none of those things because they're not a, a, aligned with one another. So right. t touch on that, how, how, cause that's the same way with the agave, right? That makes yeah. sense for you to have a sweetener because you sell teas. It's in alignment with what you're doing. So talk about how uh, you spun off those other streams from the main focus, which was the vodka. Right, and the main focus is the is the vodka. I hope you call it a hub and spoke mm -hmm. or a pinwheel. Mm -hmm. You know, you got your main core, which happens to be the vodka. Right now, because I was making the infused teas, mm -hmm. I branched off now, and now I have another product. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. which is like on a pinwheel. Right. When you got a, a thing and you got a pinwheel spoke. Yep. With the mm -hmm. on the pinwheel, that's exactly what it's called—a hub and spoke. Gotcha. Now the agave. I don't know if I went into full detail. I made that by accident. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had a fire at my place, and I was making really a simple syrup. Mm -hmm. I was making a organic simple syrup that was no chemicals because I didn't like what the, the other brands were carrying out there, and it didn't go along with Black Mama Vodka because we're so natural, mm -hmm. organic, mm -hmm. and I really wanted to stay true to that. Right. So right. I started making Black Mama mixed syrups. Mm -hmm. And I was making a low cow mm -hmm. of the agave, and I had a fire, a fire in my place. Gotcha. So, yeah, so that <laughs> happened by accident. Everyone mm -hmm. says that's, that's how FedEx started. Mm -hmm. It's a great accident. It's a you great know, accident. I up my wall, I had to go and pay for that. <laughs> <but> <laughs> right. <laughs> no, almost burned the place down, you know, mm -hmm. but... Later on, like a month later, I had this big bat, the bat, you know, this much char mm -hmm. was inside our storage room. And my daughter, she says, I said, oh, my God, I can't throw this stuff out. And mm -hmm. agave is very expensive. Mm -hmm. And she put her finger in it and she said, Mom, this tastes really good. Mm -hmm. and I was like, well, I don't know what we'll do. We'll give it to Grandma. We'll just give it out to friends. <laughs> Grandma <laughs> take anything. You know, right. Your mom right. takes anything. All right, right. baby. <laughs> Things like crap, but I'm going to take it anyway. You right, know? right. Like crap. So I, I didn't even have bottles. I bottled it into like some sample bottles I had from, you know, mm -hmm. companies that send me samples. And I gave it to several people, you know, mm -hmm. Gelson. I gave it to one of the guys who drinks my vodka. He owns like 30 supermarkets. Mm -hmm. I gave it to him. He called me the next day. He's Greek. Mm -hmm. He's Greek. He called me the next day and he said, Vanessa. I need some of that stuff that you gave me yesterday. <laughs> I said, what stuff? I kid you not. I said, what stuff, Thomas? He's like, this stuff that you gave me, the agave. I said, okay, I need 30 cases. I said, Thomas, I don't even have 30 bottles. He's like, well, I want them in my stores. I said, Thomas, this is not even a real product. Mm -hmm. He's like, I don't care. I want them. I, said, I don't even know what to call it. I kid you not. He said... Black mama cinnamon agave. <laughs> and you know what? All right, let, I said I'll do. Let, let me just get some stuff and I'll put it in just your one store, which is close to the house. Mm -hmm. you know, we live mm -hmm. like a family affluent community. Right. He's like, okay. Thank goodness, I had a peppermint mm -hmm. tea and a hibiscus tea mm -hmm. at the house. Gotcha. And I made a small batch. Of it mm -hmm. in my kitchen. I didn't even do it at my facility. Right, right. I got 18 bottles. You know, <laughs> I took the rest of out of the thing. <laughs> and I went to Staples. I kid you not. I went to Staples. Got these labels. Ah, there you go. Got, yeah, like this all the next day. Mm -hmm. And I made, you know, six cinnamon, six hibiscus, and six mint. Mm. Didn't even know how the recipe would be because it has to get to a temperature, you know, right, and I didn't right. want to burn up in my kitchen. I gave it to him, and we sold out in four days. Wow. Wow. Four days. Wow. People That's amazing. People on Facebook. I mean, we even, like, <laughs> made up labels, paper labels, you know. Listen, and that's what I that's what I want people to get is money makers or action takers. Oh yeah. You didn't say, Thomas, my friend, this ain't even a thing. I'm focused on the vodka. You said, wait a minute. 
Here's an opportunity. Here's a distributor begging me for a product. Well, shoot, let me get them some product. And you went and created something because of your intuitiveness as an entrepreneur. And then real quick, talk about how your engineering background plays into some of this, because I know engineers think differently. They see patterns and they think they think through completion and all that kind of stuff, man, because they're very analytical. But you're also blessed to have a very creative side, which is rare, I think, for some engineers because they think numbers, facts, but then you are also very creative. How does that play a part in your success and your development of products and all that kind of stuff? I got to be really honest. My husband and I had that. My husband's a mechanical engineer. There's four mm. engineers in this house. Mm. Four. My daughter don't want to have nothing to do with engineers. Right. She okay. <laughs> <laughs> my husband is a mechanical engineer. Mm -hmm. My two sons are studying engineering. DJ's mm -hmm. doing electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. Willie's doing computer science engineering. Mm -hmm. They're like straight and narrow. <laughs> and, but they are, you know, no creativity whatsoever. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I right. agree with you. But for me, I guess because I have the feminine side to mm -hmm. it. There you go. I have the creative side gotcha. in gotcha. terms of that. You mm -hmm. know, plus I was a civil engineer, civil structural engineer. Okay. So a lot of times when you're dealing with yes, the number and the architects come to you, they want to have a curved wall. Well, I gotta the architects come up with the design, but I gotta come up with the calculations to actually make that curved wall right. flat. There you, know, you go. And still yeah. be structurally sound. Yeah. So, gotcha. I've been a civil engineer, and, and my grandfather was an architect mm -hmm. builder for 38 years. You okay. know, my, gotcha. my mom's father. Gotcha. You know, and my father studied engineering, but he went into Wall Street. Gotcha. So, gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. So, <laughs> he sure did. So, so you got it honest. You got it honest. <laughs> I do. That's what my mother said. Even drinking the liquor, girl. <laughs> my father would be so proud. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. You're always thinking about creating. I'm always thinking about creating something different. And I mm -hmm. and I and it fuels me whenever I come up with a new idea. And then the first thing that comes to my mind is, okay, what's the calculation? What am I going to do? How mm -hmm. is it going to work? Because mm -hmm. that's the mind of an engineer. We're always right. thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, and even with you know with my son. Like I said, in college, I was making bootleg liquor. Mm -hmm. You know, right, you know, <laughs> on campus. Got gotcha. you know, The macaroni, you mm -hmm. know, grass, look, grass clippings on the, but we ain't got no money. Mm -hmm. I was taking mm -hmm. grass clippings from the school campus grounds, like cut the grass. Wow. And stuff, and in the pot, making, like, you been drinking now, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> I was all about making moonshine right on campus. Two dollars a cup. We were getting liquor license on campus. Oh wow, wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. I know. That's so amazing. That's how the engineers, that's how mm -hmm. engineers think, and that's the world we're in now. You know mm -hmm. that all the stuff that's been going on with technology, mm -hmm. and even with the cannabis industry, everything has mm -hmm. to deal with an engineer. Right. And it's just different levels of engineering. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it allows for you to think in a creative mind, in a in a creative way, mm -hmm. using the technical 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 facts mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. what you have, so you can right. offspring, you know, products, right. you know, which is very very important, you know. And, and then talk about this since you brought up technology. I think a lot of people who want to be entrepreneurs, a lot of people who uh, uh, have creative and can, can produce products and things. Talk about the ability that a lot of people are missing that, like you did, you went from your kitchen to a distribution arm. You didn't have to go through a thousand other channels. Talk about the ability to go straight to consumer with what you're doing and the fact that you don't need. <clears throat> I think we we miss the the part about starting from humble beginnings, right? And guys, if you are here and you have not shared the stream, you're cheating. You're bootlegging the show. The cost of admission to the show is, is to share the stream. That's the cost of admission. You got to share the stream. Don't be bootlegging us on the street and not sharing. Share the stream. That's the cost of admission to the show. But the ability to go straight to consumer 
I think a lot of people miss. And even though a lot of we're caught up in this, I've got to get famous, I got to blow up. No, well, no. you can go straight to consumer and make a lot of money, and nobody knows you. <laughs> exactly. You know, and 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 the case in point is, I have a, a friend. His name is Tom Moss. He's in the liquor industry. He makes rum chata. Now, people don't know. Rum I don't. You said that last time. I was like, what is rum chata? But two hundred fifty million dollars or something. <laughs> last year. Okay. And I piggyback on his account. Mm-hmm. You know, and, I, and he already said, we're coming into Black Mama Teas and Cafes, wherever you want us to be. Mm-hmm. And you know what the beauty is, is that he doesn't have, he doesn't have to be famous. He doesn't have to hire anyone famous. He did at one time, mm-hmm. he paid $30,000 to Kesha mm-hmm. and when he first started. Because, you know, they always come to us, but you need a celebrity. Mm-hmm. He said he didn't even do anything, Vanessa. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. Mm. He said, my advisement is don't hire a celebrity. And I said, well, I already got celebrities in my family called Tony, Trina, Tracy, Tawanda. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> and right. Tamar, mm-hmm. You know, but I'm not going to, you know, I utilize them when I want to utilize them. And, and it's only, you know, because they stay in their separate lane and I stay, they drink a lot of vodka, but mm-hmm. I stay in right. mine. But, <laughs> you know, what the thing about it is you have to prove to your customers and find different channels. Mm-hmm. Although mm-hmm. I came out with the vodka, my first set of clients was Albertson Supermarkets right there in California. Mm-hmm. Because I already knew, I shopped in Albertson Supermarket, mm-hmm. I knew the manager. He mm-hmm. said, you know what, we have a DSD. A lot of people who have businesses and you make product, you can go directly to one store. Mm-hmm. And it's called a direct sales distribution. You don't have to go to the entire distribution department. So if it's a DSD store, you can deliver right to the store mm. and they get you a check immediately. Oh, wow. There's a lot, yeah, there's a lot of supermarkets, a lot of places. People think you have to go get a distributor. You don't. Mm-hmm. You can go directly to, you know, you can go directly to Whole Foods. I do business with Whole Foods mm-hmm. in California. Um, I do business with um, Bristol Farms, which mm-hmm. is in California. But mm-hmm. they actually sell liquor in the, in the supermarkets mm-hmm. on the West Coast. You can't do that in places on the east coast so you know with Mm -hmm. liquor you got to go through a distributor but because i have you know i was in california (coughs) it allowed me to go directly because of that's my license Mm -hmm. and with doing that i ended up finding out that i can sell directly online what (laughs) wait 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 what right yeah because i'm a distiller Mm -hmm. i'm not you know not a distributor i'm the manufacturer so the laws allows that you know, mm-hmm. there's certain states I can't ship to, like um, Tennessee. You know, with like I have to send to my representative. Mm-hmm. I can ship to your state all day long. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, right. But, but, but it allowed me to push to, to direct to the public. Also, international. Mm-hmm. I don't know why you, you want to create a business and you have a product. Why the heck are you just staying right here in the U.S. of A? Yeah. <laughs> Clients. <laughs> International is begging for U.S. products. Mm-hmm. I sell, it's begging. I sell to Hong Kong, I'm in France, and now I got my U.K. office, which now you got Amazon, mm-hmm. you know, so mm-hmm. Amazon ordered 35,000 bottles of Black Mama Vodka in the U.K. Wow. They, because they sell liquor online. Mm-hmm. They sell hardcore liquor online in all of Europe. There's so much technology out there. Wow. There isn't any reason why if somebody has a product, mm-hmm. even services, that you shouldn't be selling it internationally. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. and, it's in, and the U.S., when Obama was in office, the U.S. has a program it's called Wusata, W-U-S-A-T-A. If you look up those initials, mm-hmm. that's for the West Coast. You know, it's um, Western U.S. Um, Agriculture Trade Association. Mm-hmm. They're um, organizations um, supported by the U.S. government. Mm-hmm. What they do is, if your prime brand is made here in the U.S., they're going to give you money for marketing outside of the U.S. Up mm. to three hundred thousand dollars a year as a branded program. 
Wow. So that's how I went to Hong Kong. I mm -hmm. represented the U.S. in the spirit. And I made those relationships, you know, mm -hmm. along with the Western Pavilion. Anybody can do it. As wow. long as you have the internet, there's no mm -hmm. excuse anymore. I don't care. There's no white man holding anybody down <laughs> anymore. No, yeah. Real talk. Yeah, it, it is. Money, not, you know, I'm just done going to last year just to, you know, look at my grant. Mm -hmm. Now I can imagine what I'm going to do with Black Mama Teas and Cafes, which yeah. already has a $15 million valuation before anybody even invests. Wow. I'm moving assets over there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the key is, is I'm, I'm 20, this is going to be a billion dollar company. Yeah, no I'm doubt about it. Product. Yeah, I'm bringing the products, we're creating it, mm -hmm. you know, we're manufacturing and distribution. There's no middleman. So now I'm going to bring it to retail. Yeah. So why not do that? And then I'm going to bring it international. Yeah. She called me from Ireland the other day. She said, I need a black mama tea and cafe. I had a guy who's in <laughs> Dubai. Seriously. I, a guy in Dubai who buys my agave. Mm -hmm. He says, we'd like to do a franchise here, do a licensing agreement for black mama teas and cafe. I mm -hmm. got to start referring this. I would start referring this stuff to my attorneys mm -hmm. because they're going to have to, okay, we need to do licensing. We need to do all this. You need to get all that done. The, yeah. Yeah, the military. Right now, we're working the licensing deals with the military. Mm -hmm. um, some of the colleges, I think it's Virginia State. One of the colleges in Virginia said they would like to have a franchise. So now mm -hmm. we're saying, okay, it's not going to be a franchise. We'll license it to you. Mm -hmm. we'll so that's a licensing deal now. Yeah. You know, you're going to yeah. have the franchisee. Mm -hmm. We'll have our own corporate stores. We've got our own products. Now we'll license the name and then sell the products to you. Right. And then, we'll, right. you know, cooperate with the school. They might, we might want to do a private label for them mm -hmm. with their own products. Mm -hmm. That's how you earn money from generations <clears throat> to generations through the equity of the stock that you buy. Yeah. Yeah. That is powerful. And, and, and you made a, another decision that, that, that has always intrigued me. You 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 decided that you were going to make the healthy vodka, right? The the <laughs> the healthy vodka, if there is a such thing. But you also decided that this was going to be a premium brand. You know, it's a it's a superior brand, as you see what it's saying on the yeah bottom. yeah. So so talk about that because I think sometimes we tend to believe, and and this all is psychological, man. With us as black people, it's like. We don't believe that we can produce quality, so we have problems producing something nice and then pricing it where it should be because of the work that goes into it and understanding the value of a product that is kosher certified, a, a value of a liquor that has no uh, additives and chemicals and all that kind of stuff. Most of us will put all of that work in and then some will say, well, this is a black person brand. You can't charge all that money for your liquor. Or you can't price it there. You said, no, this is a premium or a superior product. So I'm putting it on top shelf with all the other top shelf liquors. So what was that decision and thought process like going into that? You know what? I'm going to be really honest. It was a, 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 a white man. It, actually, it was Kevin Thill at um, Alveson mm -hmm. and, um, and Mr. Wong. When the, and this was my first client. And you got to understand that I'm in this industry for the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, black woman, damn black mama vodka. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm mm -hmm. the cutting edge. You right. Know? Yeah. Yeah. And, but I'm the type of person where I don't take no for an answer. I mm -hmm. mean, <laughs> you say this, that, and no, we're doing this. I'm right. Right. You ain't telling me that I'm not doing this. Right. Okay. Right. I'll find another store because it's mm -hmm. going to get done. Mm -hmm. And. When I brought the bottle and Kevin Phil said, well, how much you want to charge? And I said, well, I'm thinking maybe 21. Mm -hmm. And it was them. It was Henry Wong and Kevin Phil, a white man and an Asian man. Mm -hmm. The Asian man was the, the buyer mm -hmm. for Alberson. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. For liquor mm -hmm. and the deciding factor. He's hard on other people, but he was nice to me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I guess because he felt the synergy. Right. And I said, maybe 21. But what they did, he said, here's a comparison sheet, which I can admit I didn't do a comparison sheet on, you know, on the what was on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And your vodka is organic. 
How many of these vodkas are again? None. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you bump your price up. Mm -hmm. You're kosher. How many of these are kosher? Okay, none. So now you bump your price up. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at the value of what the comparison is. Now, yours don't have chemical. It's infusion. How many of these are doing that? Mm -hmm. None. So now you bump it up. Mm -hmm. So it that put in my mind by learning from them mm -hmm. within that industry is your product has a value. I don't care who makes it, what color you are. When you make something that's out, that's that nobody can compare mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. even in a saturated market, right, right, you put the price up to top shelf. Now let's mm -hmm. compare that who's okay, who's organic. You got Belvedere and this, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. They are at that price range. Mm -hmm. So that's what you look at. You got to be able to look at the price range mm -hmm. of your competitors. Right. And do the numbers mm -hmm. and then go for it. Because if you decide that you're going to make a brand and you say, okay, I'm going to make a, you know, a cherry flavored vodka. Guess what? You're using a chemical that's cherry flavored. So now you're with the rest. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. use any chemicals because that's what's inside the liquor. Right. It's not natural flavors. That's the name of the company that makes the <laughs> yeah. Kit. Yeah. I told you the last time. That's the name of the company yeah. that makes the flavoring, which is chemical, you know. And I'm gonna do, you know, I think I told you when I dropped a, a drop of it mm -hmm. when I first started to to put, you know, oh okay, this is the way you do it. Mm -hmm. All right, I dropped a little bit on my paper and it burned a hole through my paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't do that. I can't, right. I can't drink it. And this is what people are selling in this market. Mm -hmm. Now, in Europe, they have very high standards when it comes to food mm -hmm. and liquor. So right. when you get into the European market, they want the highest and the highest quality. Mm -hmm. And that's why my product was classified as a superior. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. stands alone. When people taste it, mm -hmm. they stay with it and they keep coming back. I have right. customers. I keep mm -hmm. coming back and coming back the true telling to me. Yeah. You know, in terms of that. So when you're making a product, think about what separates you from the rest. You don't need a celebrity. You don't need, you know, what happened? I lost you. No, I just I just went to screen share to show them your website. Yeah, you don't need a celebrity. Mm -hmm. You don't need, you know, a whole bunch of, you know, money. You need to grind in the street. Mm -hmm. And you need mm -hmm. to talk to the right customers because sometimes it's not for everyone. Yeah. You know, people who drink absolute vodka, absolutely not for me, are not the same people that drink my vodka. Yeah. And gotcha. It's fine, but gotcha. there's something for everyone. Yeah. And, and when you when you told me that last time, man, that tripped me out and says th they're using the name. The name of the company is All Natural. So <laughs> it's, it's made with natural flavors and you think, OK, no, but that's that's not true. So I'm going to read to you some of the questions and comments, guys. We got uh, we're going to talk about the investment piece, uh, Timothy. So, yes, you can still invest. Absolutely. Uh, so we're going to get that thing done. Uh, uh, Soul Tree Sound says I have a nightclub uh, and uh, obviously he wants a uh, uh, Black Mama Baca on the, the top shelf at his nightclub, right? So uh, we're definitely uh, uh, Vanessa is very hold very that, good hold at. That, hold that, hold that, yeah. Hold that. The, um, I don't have black. I don't put black the black mama vodka at nightclubs. I have another brand that's All called right. Black Mama Pussy That'll be at the nightclub. Gotcha. So, <laughs> so so we got something for you, uh, uh, Soulja. We got something for you. Not Black Mama brand, but we got something for you. So you can have a. A black, a black owned uh, uh, brand uh, in your clothes, man. So uh, definitely, definitely, definitely. All right. So let's let's talk about this opportunity. So you, you took the model. You said, you know what? Not only did I create a brand, I created a successful brand and I'm good at this. And then because I created a successful brand, I was able to spin off. Uh, a couple other brands that are doing really well and you say you know what since I am already the manufacturer and the producer with my own facilities it only makes sense for me to have my own retail outlets 
And then the, the, the thought came, Black Mama Tea and Cafe. So talk a little bit about how that evolved and then what this investment opportunity looks like and how, how we're even able to invest with you pre-IPO uh, without being uh, uh, qualified, accredited investors, right? How, how did that all, talk about that because that's a, that's a wonderful story. And I think this show is all about educating the masses uh, and I think this is a bit of financial education that we absolutely have to keep repeating. So, so talk about that a little yeah. bit. Well, first of all, when I decided to do Black Mama Teas and Cafe, it was all because of the simple fact that my current customers, I, well, at the time it was 27,000, but now I have 28,000 customers that buy from me online and other places. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them were asking, can I invest? Can I invest in Black Mama Boxer? Can I invest in Black Mama Tea? You know, and I said, no, because it was never the intention of me having investors. I already put my million dollars into it and go into a seven million dollar company a year. Mm -hmm. Why the heck am I gonna, unless you guys come in with 10 million or 100 <laughs> million, but no, I'm not doing that. Right. That's not the intent. Mm -hmm. But then when the laws change, when the SEC laws change, mm -hmm. I'm out there and I wait, 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 wait. Let me stop you. Well, let me stop you before you go into the laws change because I, I want people to get that piece of it. <laughs> the intent of Black Mama Vodka was for your children. It's you said, right, but, but you said, hey, I'm building this for them. And no, I don't need your investment money. We're going to be good. This is going to be a hundred-year-old company, and my children are going to just keep this thing going. So no, I don't need you. See, that's a different type of mindset. It says, you know what? I have a plan for this brand right here, and I'm going to stick to that plan. But again, this is the power of being a solopreneur. And I know you got a, a big team and all that, but, but what I mean by a solopreneur is you're the decision maker. You can be nimble enough to say, wait a minute, I've got this. I don't need your investment money for this. However, let me pivot just a little bit and see how I can use your investment money and partner with you and create another opportunity and another brand and then with the change that Obama put into place uh, with the SEC and the Jobs Act, now another idea pops into your head. So go ahead and pick up from there. But, 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 but just reel back a little. Mm -hmm. Too often, and this is what I find with our people, is they want to come in when it's at the very end. Mm -hmm. Because five years ago, when I started Black Mama Vodka, mm -hmm. I did it, you know, yeah, I did it on my own, used my husband's money to his, his 401k and mine, mm -hmm. you right. know, and which is good because what, we staying married no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm here by, you know, and it's for the sentiment of my mm -hmm. But I thought about, what if somebody offered me then an investment and say, well, I'm going to invest because I believe in you. Mm -hmm. I probably would have took it because I wouldn't have had to use all of my money. Right, you know? right. And that's the thing. When you come in, when you're doing it and you're doing the work and then all of a sudden you start making a whole lot of money, that's when everybody want to get in. Mm -hmm. After mm -hmm. you've already done the work. Right, right. Where were you when I was doing the work when you should have invested them? So my thing yeah. is, wait a minute, I built this up. Why do I want to share something with you that you didn't build and you didn't come and invest in the very beginning? Right, right. That, that's, that's, and that's the, I don't want to say the ego, but that's the part of me where, like, I grind like this. So mm -hmm. This is going to stay like this right. for the family because I already built it. Right. You know, and gotcha. then now, because these investors, a lot of the customers were like, I want to buy, I don't want to, you know what? The laws change. Mm -hmm. Obama changed the laws. Previously, the only way you guys can get into, anybody can get into an IPO or pre-IPO, seed round, series A. They got different names for it. Mm -hmm. But the seed round and then IPO and then to the stock market is we have to put in 25000 or 100000 to a hedge fund company mm -hmm. on Wall Street. Mm -hmm. And then they would be the ones that would have access to 
the CEO of Facebook mm -hmm. or the president, uh, we have this money and we'll put together a, a seed round. So that's what was being mm -hmm. done right. for many, many years, okay, for 83 years mm -hmm. since the stock market changed. And it excluded a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can get in is if you were an accredited <clears throat> investor and you have to fill out forms. I'm an accredited investor, so I have always had, I've always invested in pre IPOs, IPOs, you take a chance. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if something didn't work out, at least I had the full deduction on my taxes. 100% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. tax deductible right. on your taxes. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, if you make a profit, mm -hmm. and they make a profit, people don't realize you have a qualified small business stock. Mm -hmm. Your profits are tax free up to $10 million. Whoa! What? Yes. This is how the rich stay rich. And that's how we have to educate ourselves. Your profits, when you put your money into a pre-IPO or a, a seed round of a startup or a startup expansion before mm -hmm. it hits the market, and let's say you, you, it hits the market and you hold it for five years. Now they reduce the time. But before it was five years. Mm -hmm. After and even now with my own stock that's restricted, my stock's restricted for five years for Black Mama Teas and Cafe because I'm the major shareholder, so I can't sell it right. at all on right. the market. You know, mm -hmm. but I could take a little bit of profit after five years. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna make sure this thing is a hundred to two hundred dollars a share. Right. In five years. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> I'm the major stakeholder. Right. But we sell. Mm -hmm. The loss, the IRS loss, so called 1202 on the IRS, up to $10 million mm -hmm. federally tax free. Wow. Wow. So even if you bought and you made a thousand, it's federally tax free. This is financial education. You got to yeah. know about what's involved with the tax laws. Mm -hmm. The money is going mm -hmm. to forward to your children, mm -hmm. you know, investments. All of this comes with part of just your business structure as well. Mm -hmm. So when that law changed, now it afforded everybody, mm -hmm. uncredited investors mm -hmm. and accredited investors on the same playing field. Wow. The only difference is unaccredited investors are still protected by the SEC anyway. Because mm -hmm. they're not going to allow you to put more than you should. You can put two thousand, no more than two thousand mm -hmm. dollars per year in any startup company gotcha. when you're unaccredited. Gotcha. Okay, gotcha. and and it's based also on your income, but that's that's what the threshold is. So if mm -hmm. you make over one hundred and fifty thousand or one hundred thousand, you know, then you have to stay, and then it will take you okay, no more than five grand or ten grand. Right. Right. When you're an, an accredited, when you're an accredited investor, it's unlimited. You can go all in. <laughs> yeah. They expect you. You say if if you have a million dollar net worth, couple hundred grand, you know a little bit about money. So we ain't trying to protect you. You you ain't get to a million dollar net worth by accident, right? So. But also gotcha. too, gotcha. they know that if you're an accredited investor, that you already know what to do with the money, mm -hmm. whether it's if you lose it or if you make it, you know the tax you know the tax that yeah. come with it. Yeah. Because you already hired. So they're not expecting people who put in 500 You know, they're not as savvy, but mm -hmm. putting $500, $500 is a lot of money for some people. Yeah, yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. Just to start off versus mm -hmm. putting up 25000 you know, or 75000 mm -hmm. So that's what happened. So now, when I saw that the laws changed, and I started investing in a couple of startups, mm -hmm. five grand here. And I said, wait a minute. I called my attorney. I said, I'm going to set up Black Mama Teas and Cafes, and I'm going to take this company public. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's when I called my attorney. And I said, I'm going to take this company public because now I can have my customers and regular and affinity people invest. I don't mm -hmm. have to use that hedge fund. Mm -hmm. Not until later on. Right and now, I'm allowing people to come in on the ground floor, like how Facebook mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? 
and you know you see that number just that number just went up right yeah there. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah see we we've we been trying to get people out there man and get them get them get them connected with you listen so this is what the website looks like the we funder uh this is a sec regulated uh, yes, platform yes, so you can definitely you know feel safe that this is all on the up and up that this is yes. where you can go and invest minimum investment is five hundred dollars uh, as you can see it's 131 uh, investors right now over 117 grand uh, of, of invested uh, uh, right now so you can own a piece of black mama tea and cafe before Thank she you. even gets into the second round <laughs> of yeah, early yeah. investing so yeah. this is this is and the very early early stages of of the investing right yeah this is called seed round or series a round okay and you do this and i didn't have to do this mm -hmm. you know because i could have just went to the ipo round because it mm -hmm. already has a 15 million uh, market value gotcha you know? so that's and that's what you need to to go list anyway into mm -hmm. your ipo mm -hmm. so i did this so that way People, customers, vendors, people that I know can get in yeah. on the ground floor. And then it brought light to the community. Mm -hmm. But now people seeing what's going on. Mm -hmm. well, that's how also I got my million dollar deal with Ikea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so talk about that, man. Because cause that, that floored me, man. When you sent me that, I was like... This is huge because IKEA is huge, right? So, so what was what was the deal? Uh, uh, I don't know if you want to disclose all that, but you, you obviously some people with IKEA were kind of uh, some some employees told some higher ups about you, and they started following you. And how did that all come to be? God honest truth, my warehouse. I think this the video. If you see the video, mm -hmm. all that stuff is from IKEA. Okay. Uh, the IKEA, um, here. And I was the guy. So, the, so, so the video that you shot, the one that I, I posted, that everything behind you is IKEA. Is that, is that the one? IKEA product. Gotcha. Okay. You know? And I was going in buying um, pallets, and I, and they would see me regularly, and they would say, "What the heck are you building? <laughs> you buying this store out like <laughs> you got us working." Right, right. <laughs> you know, and I said, oh, I'm building, you know, my manufacturing facility. And then, it, you know, it was done. And when I took, I took a picture and I gave it, I showed it to the guy. He said, yo, and it was a brother, send that to me. We, I got to send it to corporate and the marketing. They are trying to reach out to businesses and do business with businesses. Because, mm -hmm. you know, they're very good with consumers. Right. But they're trying to get into the businesses. Mm -hmm. I said, well, all right, you know, he sent it to um, the marketing department or whoever, and I didn't hear anything. But mm -hmm. then when I came back with Black Mama, for, you know, getting stuff for Black Mama Teas and Cafe, the guy saw me. He said, oh, here's Rosalind. This is our head of marketing. Mm -hmm. And she, white woman, and there was a black guy standing next to her. Mm -hmm. I guess he works for her. He was just grinning from ear to ear. <laughs> she said, I've been trying to get in contact with you. It's amazing what you did. I said, well, thank you, but I'm taking Black Mama, I'm doing Black Mama teas in cafes, and I'm taking that to the New York Times. Mm -hmm. She said, okay, we need to sit down. She said, we want to get involved from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Initially, the first two stores, mm -hmm. they're going to be really giving me the product. Wow. They're giving it to me. The cabinetry, they're providing design services, mm. furniture, anything that I choose. They'll even custom make stuff so that way it's in stock. Mm -hmm. So, and the thing about it, the good thing about it is once they're inside the two locations, which are my flagship stores, mm -hmm. it becomes a standard. Right. So now right. all the other franchisees, all the other 500 stores, will have the same look. Mm -hmm. That's a win for them because yeah. then everybody's got to buy from Ikea. Mm -hmm. And then Ikea is going to give a kickback, not a kickback, for Black Mama Teas and Cafes mm -hmm. on the franchise and will make a percentage mm -hmm. of the furniture. Nice. So, nice. Yeah, so that's how it is. So even if it was $2,000 for furniture, which we know it's going to be more, mm -hmm. 
500 locations is a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. That is, <laughs> that is, that is crazy. And, right. And, it's, and, and, you know, they're going to create a catalog for us. And it's, so it's a nice partnership. We're going to do, um, they want to do the commercial, mm -hmm. do their, their business commercial inside the Black Mama Teasing campaign. Let's say it was like, we want to come and do a commercial at your facility. I said, oh, no, no, no. I'm <laughs> done paid for because you know, now you're going to capitalize off of what you know. Right, 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 right. <laughs> no, no. Let's save that for Black Mama Teasing campaign. Mm hmm. Oh, like, look what you did. Yeah, like, right, you right. No, nope. no, nope. because then you capitalize on that commercial, too, because they got to shout out Black Mama Tea and Cafe, so that's a whole right. nother, yeah, right. yeah. I'm showing my facility that I done paid for a Right, <laughs> right, right. you want to shoot a commercial, but I feel them. They're going to try. Yeah, absolutely. So then, yeah, they were, like, telling me all the locations they have, mm -hmm. and so it's a great partnership. Because mm -hmm. they and they even sending people like check out this this they contacted other companies mm -hmm. who want to invest mm -hmm. or you know contact they want to provide stuff. Guy mm -hmm. called me. He wants to provide the ceiling panels for free. I'm mm -hmm. like what? <laughs> <laughs> Verizon called. They're like you want to be involved. Yeah. Square called. Everybody wants to be involved ever since that the news broke out in the financial news. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they, Ikea sees it, it's a long-term partnership. As long yeah. as Black Mama Tea and Cafe is around, mm -hmm. Republic, and they are too, it's a right. million-dollar company. Yeah, absolutely. It's a long-term partnership. So they're excited. I'm excited. Yeah. You know, they already started delivering stuff to my warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> so they, didn't, they didn't waste time. You know? Yeah. And it's a great partnership. And I like that, and I like that she said, you know what, I see where this is going. And unlike some of your friends who saw the vodka and you were putting your own into it, she said, I want to be involved from the very beginning. So this partnership, like you said, 50 years from now, this could be Black Mama Brands and Ikea. We were there from the beginning. Right. We help. We grew yeah. together. And that's those are the types of partnerships that you want uh, and not people piggybacking off and just riding your success. But no, this is the these people came in and saw my vision from the beginning uh, and we formed this wonderful partnership. So, guys, you see 15 million dollar valuation uh, again. We thank hold you. Up, up, Go ahead. Do you know now that Ikea is involved? My valuation increases for IPO. So uh, now, yeah, yeah. Because when the IPO is happening, now you're like, okay, we got a million dollar plus campaign with Verizon. With, um, or IKEA, IKEA, right? Right. Who's also going to be selling our products just as well. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and then, you know, so every time you tackle something on it, it makes the stock much more valuable. And yeah. that's the key. Yeah. Because I got I to bring this to $200 a share within five years. I ain't letting it go. <laughs> yeah, and, and that is powerful. And you're right with those strategic partnerships. So, guys, you learn some lessons here, man. Don't be afraid to manufacture and produce. Don't be afraid to own your own equipment and your own facilities. Uh, I think it's Mark Cuban says that people who start businesses with loans are, are crazy. Right. Because you can build from the ground up, you scale, you own everything. And now it's a matter of strategic partners now. Right. Because I know because of this valuation and the implications that partnerships have on the value of the company, you have to be very smart in aligning yourself with the right companies. Right. Because every fit ain't a good fit because somebody just like they brought you up, somebody could bring you down if. If they got some scandal going on <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. So. Absolutely. But you know what, too? Mm -hmm. With being with having IKEA, it allows more, um, it brings um, credibility and value to the stock mm -hmm. yeah. itself. And that's why it's very important for as many people to jump in with their $500, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. with their $5 a share. Yeah. It's a win-win. 
Yeah. God forbid if you lost it. I ain't trying. If you losing it, imagine what I'm losing. Right. 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 Come right. on. You know? But the simple fact, hold on, the simple fact that everybody knows I'm going to the New York Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. See, that's the key. Mm -hmm. If you invest in something, at least you know where the end result is. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I want liquidity too. Mm -hmm. The key mm -hmm. is you know that this investment, you can sell when you get to the market. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's my ultimate goal. Yeah. Because what is the problem with investing? Mm -hmm. I'm getting feedback. I'm getting feedback. It might be me. Uh -huh. Yeah. So why not? And, and you know, and I've had people ask a billion and one question. I understand this five hundred dollars is a lot of money for some people. Mm -hmm. But you're in, giving me a full interrogation. <laughs> <laughs> but I got fifty million on the line. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and I get it. People don't want to money, but that money is your money. Still, it doesn't become mine. Mm -hmm. Your money translates into equity, into shares, which you can will, you can sell, you can take a loan out. People don't. That's what. That's how you get rich. Mm -hmm. You can leverage it. You know, it's and then you can sell off the pro profits, keep your original investment as it grows, and then buy other shares. You know, mm -hmm. and then buy other things. <clears throat> that's how you grow a portfolio. Yeah, and I love that, like you said, you could have went straight IPO. You did not have to do this. But look at the education that we get because you have done this. Uh, I mean, you've blown my mind from the first time you were on the show and now this time you've even, uh, you know, taken it to a whole nother level. And guys, for those of you who don't know, we're going to stick around for a minute. This ain't, <laughs> I know it's normally uh, a, a, a one-hour show but you can't just do a one hour show with someone like Vanessa. You have to really let her go in because I want you to get into, uh, you guys know it's $500 buy in uh, and you can buy as many shares as you want beyond the $500. We're going to come back and we're going to actually have you to do this um, and we're going to do a webinar and I'm going to actually go through and buy my, uh, put my 500 in and we're going to show people how to do that. Right. Show them how that works and where the stock sits and all that kind of stuff. So we're, we're going to do that live and I'll let you know we'll, we'll schedule that for maybe a Sunday evening or something. And that way more oh, people can take credit cards, wire checks, mm -hmm. Bitcoin. <laughs> nice. Nice. So, yeah. So we're going to show people how to actually do it step by step. Because I think that's another fear that some people have is the process. Okay, now what do I do once I own the 500? How do I add to it if I want to buy more? Or what kind of account do I set up? Where does the stock sit? How, how does, where do I get my certificates from? All that kind of stuff. So we'll break all of that down in a separate private webinar for those who want to invest. We'll show you, we want you to have your 500 in hand and we're gonna yes, show do. you how to go through the system that way you can do it with us. You can watch us on your cell phone, have your laptop up, and go through step by step how to do this process. So I think that'll be a, a great thing for us to do. Uh, but you, you talked about the access that you now have to other what we would call in the hood, those smoke filled rooms where decisions are really being made and meetings are happening that we never know about. All of a sudden, 10 years from now, we just see partnerships happening. But those things were happening behind closed doors because of people with money were con uh, 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 convoiting with other people with money, making decisions that we had no, no, no idea about and privy to information that we just don't understand. So talk about some of those meetings that you've gotten a chance to, to, to be a fly in the wall in some of those meetings. And you're like, wait, what? You doing what? This, this is... <laughs> Let me tell you, it wasn't just a flying doggone wall. I had a seat in the chair. Mm. <laughs> gotcha, I, gotcha. I, you know, I live in a predominantly um, Republican white community mm -hmm. in Long Island, and you know, and I don't want to say everybody's racist, but this is like a, it, it's okay. It is what it is. <laughs> it, it is. Listen, white. 
and long money, we know what that equals 99.99% of the time. <laughs> Especially if that money is old money, right? <laughs> yeah, I live in an area called the Vanderbilt. Okay, and okay. Vanderbilt used to own the roads and everything named after them. They used to own all the property in this area gotcha. back in the gotcha. day. And the family still probably did. So mm. that's old money on this side yeah. of the street. Yeah, absolutely. So, and predominantly Jewish. But I got a call from a gentleman. It said um, they wanted me to attend a breakfast meeting. And, you know, it's for my peers. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, okay, black people, women? No. He said, no, no, just other CEOs. <laughs> he said, mm. no. <laughs> I said, <laughs> straight out. And I said, well, I pretty much know about all, you know, I have a business in the community. I pretty much know about all the meetings that, you know, that are happening. I said, how long have you guys been meeting? He said, since 1957. I said, <laughs> 50 years? <laughs> right. Right. Oh no, I'm coming to that breakfast. Absolutely. I come in. You guys have been meeting in Long Island for 60 years, and mm. I don't know about it. Yeah. He said, Well, that's why I'm calling you now. I got my number. Your attorney gave me. Your attorney. I said, I'm going to remind him. <laughs> <laughs> I said, All right. I'm a, and I was Jewish too. I said, All right, I'm going to come. Mm -hmm. I get to the meeting. I didn't even get in the door. Mm hmm. This is breakfast. I get there, four white men, and the gentleman said, oh, I'm a black mama vodka. I was mm -hmm. like, how do you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. Let me tell it was scary, Cortez, because he knew where I live, he knew what organizations I'm a member of, he knew where I made my donations, mm -hmm. he knew how much money I made, he knew, he knew everything. I swore this was like Illuminati. Mm -hmm. They knew a lot. They knew a lot about me mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. my family. Right. Who I'm friends with. I said, "You, do you know what color underwear I'm wearing?" <laughs> right. And he said, "Probably pink." And I looked. I said, oh, "Shit, he's right." <laughs> <laughs> but that was scary mm -hmm. because these are white men, mm -hmm. and. He, they knew everything about me. And I said, why did you take so much time to know about me? Mm -hmm. He said, we vet anybody that we're going to consider to join our organization. Mm -hmm. And I didn't ask to join nothing. Right. <laughs> vet. I didn't. Mm -hmm. We vet. Because not everybody could be a part of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay. Finally go in. Let me tell you. The room... I would say 97% white men. Mm -hmm. I was the only black person and the only black woman. Mm -hmm. There was two white women. One woman was the senior vice president for TD Bank. She manages all their accounts. Mm -hmm. And then the other one, I forgot what she did. Mm -hmm. But to me, that's a big disparity, disparity because here it is, these secret meetings are happening and we're not there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. period. And I gather it's not just here, it's all over. This is a yeah. nation, this is a worldwide organization mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ran by white men. The mm -hmm. man that was sitting next to me, I gave him a tea bag. Mm -hmm. He's doing a hundred million a year. White mm. man. He invented solar panels. Wow. Wow. Yes. He yeah. has 3,000 employees. Yeah. I said, can you get my nephews a job? <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the people that were in this room, mm -hmm. it was all about, first of all, what happens here stays here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's what they said. Mm -hmm. You're helping other CEOs. That's your peer. Mm -hmm. So if your company is at another level, <clears throat> group of CEOs who are at that level who's going to mess with you. Mm -hmm. So you're there to help if he has a problem with his employees, this, that, and the other. We're the peer group. Mm -hmm. We help him make a decision. Mm -hmm. um, can you do and, and And we did an exercise. And I truly felt like maybe they were testing me. But I was saying, well, did you do this? Did you do that? Did you do this? 
It was mm-hmm. nothing but money in the room. Right. And you can see the white, the old white man with his glasses kind of like <laughs> nudge me. Oh, you really, like, they was like shocked. Like, you really know your stuff. Right. I'm a business right. owner. Right. You know? And, but, but also, let mm-hmm. me tell you, mm-hmm. they were talking about, they had a speaker there, and they were talking about recession proofing your business. Mm. Mm. Also, they had numbers in terms of what the stock market's going to do between now and the next five to ten years. Mm. What the heck? They <laughs> had no- it blew my mind because the amount of information they had. These companies was just in this room. Mm-hmm. If he's doing a hundred million, I can imagine what the rest. Mm-hmm. Some of them were publicly traded companies mm-hmm. that I didn't even know was already on the stock market. And they were like, we'll offer to help you. You mm-hmm. just, you know, here's my card. Let's have lunch. We're going to help you to get. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why are you guys helping? <laughs> right, you know? right. <laughs> you know, but the thing is, it was enlightening because now I got access and information to stuff that nobody else has. Mm-hmm. This has been going on for years. For years. And when I looked at this, I said, black people are nowhere. Mm-hmm. We're mm-hmm. not, if I'm coming into this, Mm-hmm. And that means we're not we're not anywhere. Right. This right. is too far of a gap. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is what's going on. And the only reason why I got there is because of the level that I've gotten access to. Mm-hmm. So now I'm going to be headed to New York Stock Stock Exchange. Stock Exchange. Mm-hmm. That's where they're going to want to be, and they're going to want to say, "We're with Black Mama Teas and Cafe. Right. We were there. That's right. how it is. That's how it but works. It's a whole other level. But mm-hmm. I was kind of saddened to the simple fact that it's taken this long mm-hmm. for at least one of us to have access. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be that I'd be the first black or African-American woman to be listed in New York Stock Exchange. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be that. Right. You know, right. and the thing is, is that we're not there. You get one there, then you can change. Right now, do you know that we can change, those companies change corporate policy, change policies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. When I'm sitting at the New York Stock Exchange and y'all got somebody that's sitting up there, I already hired a lobbyist to mm-hmm. change legislation. Right. Now we can change and make sure we put money, I'm putting money in Super PAC to change the judges, to change the Rockefeller laws, to change the laws for, for, for people going to jail. Mm-hmm. We can mm-hmm. do the, the, the protesting in the street, but we don't have anybody sitting there. Mm-hmm. The stock Man. market changes legislation. That's what the Koch brothers do. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. what that's what they all do. And you're able because the because the Supreme Court changed the laws now. Mm-hmm. If you're a corporation, you can put unlimited funds into a campaign. Yes. So if yes. I'm putting unlimited funds into a, somebody's campaign and I hire a lobbyist, mm-hmm. I can get anybody out of jail. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. nobody's up there fighting for us in terms of the value of the money. With the money. It is. With people, the money. With the money. We want money. to talk about change and we want to vote. 30% of the people, of the votes that come in, only 30% of that is really an impact. Mm-hmm. But money from corporate structures is 75%. That's, that's, and, and that's what I, one of the things that I try to help us understand is the economic impact on politics. Everybody wants to say voting in the right person. You vote in that person, then that person gets bought and paid for by somebody else. Whose agenda is that person fighting for? The person who bought and paid for him. So we've got to have a solid economic base. And I I appreciate what you're doing and, and letting us understand how that works but we can't just continue to send a parade of politicians there and not have the economic resources to help them make the changes that we sent them there to make in the first place because best believe those boys with the long money when they don't care what color a politician is hey you're over this region you're over this district i need something to impact this district Here's how much money we got for you to make that happen. And we've got to be able to put ourselves in position to economically fund uh, some of those politicians to carry out our agendas when we get to that level. I, I mean, that is that is that's, powerful. That's why you hear. That's why you hear 
where people are over, you know, protesting about how Wall Street, it, it is. Wall Street is running the government. It mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. It is. Never the laws wants to change since Clinton, but mm -hmm. it is. So if that's where we need to be, then let us get there and be there. Mm -hmm. Let's get one person there so we can bring another and bring in another. And mm -hmm. that way people can stop complaining about stuff. The reason why this is not getting done is because you ain't put your $500, you didn't put your, your money and your investment in. Or mm -hmm. you're not supporting this politician. You're going and making the vote. Right. So the real talk is right. money is power. Yeah. And the power that's it. brings money. Yeah. It, that's it. It's it. That's it. And that's what it is. And we've got to accept that because if you think about the Asian community has the lowest voter turnout of any ethnic group on the planet, but they also build and they own their own economy. So when they want something done, they can care less who's in office. They've got the money and the power to back and say, hey, here's what we need to see happen. Here's we need to carve out this little bit of territory for our people. Here's what we need the police force to do in this territory to make sure that we're safe. Here's what we need the judges to do about people infiltrating. This is this is where it is, man. And we've got to accept that and stop complaining about it and, and, and put ourselves in a position to change it, man. I, I love it. Thing, this group that I I'm I'm joining this group. I, <laughs> I ain't letting that split. But they still like, you know, got a bet. But I end up finding out just in the New York State chapter, mm -hmm. there's only eight hundred and sixty one companies that are members. Mm. Not one black person or a black woman. And I was like, we need to have diversity. And a lot of people was asking about But we needed to make sure we find someone who meet, met the criteria. And you met the criteria. There mm -hmm. aren't any black people who, who meet that criteria, not in this future. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully, you know, that'll change. But right. also, between that 861, this is just in New York. Mm hmm moving 36 billion dollars between them. wow wow 861 companies or members just in this whole state of new york most of them Wall Street, moving between all those companies 36 billion dollars wow wow that's, and i said you know what i'm gonna join uh, and I kept, and by the time they were done, I was like, "How much is it to join?" He went in. He was like, <laughs> "Now I'm begging to join." Right. How? Like, tell me. I'm like, hold on. Just tell me. I'm gonna write the check. I'm like, hold on. You still gotta. Right. There's a process. <laughs> Get you through the process. Can I have my yes. checkbook out? <laughs> now, now you, why you bring me to this? Are you feeding me? <laughs> and, you know, but by the time I left, everybody was giving me their car. Mm -hmm. Listen, we're going to help you with whatever you need. I got a ton of investors when you do the IPO round, or if you need it right now, we can close it. That's how it comes because they see money. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that's how we get to those levels. Mm -hmm. But it's just frustrating with our people sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Like, <laughs> you know, and I think because we've been so. Um, how you say it, disappointed by a lot of the things that go on in society mm -hmm. that was meant for us. But mm -hmm. you know what? We got to get over that. Get over that shit. Drop, you know, brush your, the yeah. stuff off your shoulder. Yeah. And just keep it moving. But find another vehicle. <clears throat> right. Another vehicle. Instead of you paying, putting your money into red bottom shoes, you know, Apple products. I mean, it's good to use that, but it is an investment. So mm -hmm. you at least know, okay, even if I don't want this stock, at least I know it's going to be a real stock exchange and I can sell. Right. That's the same right. as if you're going to play a lotto ticket mm -hmm. and you have a chance to win. You have a better chance. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's still yours. It's still yours. And then you know you can do something about it. Absolutely. And I think the whole thing is about the, the education. A lot of people don't, you know, they, you know, so, um, a friend of my mom said, oh, that's what white people do. No, it's not what white people do. <laughs> that's that's what white people started mm -hmm. because that's what they were in the industry. But everybody can get it. My father bought stock, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So it's not about just what, we gotta get that, that yeah. how do you call that? 
Niggerish mentality. That, I was just gonna say the same. It's the nigger mentality, man. That <laughs> listen, guys, I, 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 you rarely hear me use that word on this show, but I tried it. When I do oh, use it, okay. there is it's in context. We've got to get rid of the nigger mentality. That's I'm it. Niggerish. And, 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 and you really gotta, you really gotta realize that 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 mentality is. Is created, is formed. Niggas is a product of America, right? They made niggas, right? And and there is a clear, distinct difference between a nigga and a black person, right? But uh, a nigga is what was created, and that mentality is holding us back. And and we've got to let the black person in us come through, right? Just just point blank. Uh, and and pick that uh, period. So uh, and the other thing. Wrong now. I love this country. I'm yeah. Gonna be real honest. I yeah. love America because I'm gonna be honest. I couldn't be in a nothing country without my black people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Black woman doing what I'm doing. Right. I'm proud and I see those women. They don't get a chance to do anything. At least mm-hmm. in this country. Mm-hmm. Women or black people. We have we can take advantage of so much, yeah. that, and we, we really need to. So I love this country for the simple fact of the good, yeah. And because the because, the the because the opportunity, because the opportunity still lives here. Now mm-hmm. you can talk about the fact that you might have to fight two or three or four times harder. You can talk about the fact that there is somebody trying to exclude you every time you. Yes, all of that exists, but. All I need is a chance to get in the game. I don't care how difficult the obstacles are for me to win the game. Just just let me get in the game. I'll figure all that stuff out. <laughs> Hold up. Or just create your own new or, game. Or create your own game. We still got the opportunities right here before us. And the last thing, uh, just the, oppor- the, the ability for us or, or for you to, to not only get there and represent us, but also you're creating the model and the template along the way. Oh, yeah. And that oh. is, that's the part that is priceless. You want to take a company to the New York Stock Exchange? You want to do it successfully? You want to build partnerships? You want to create an international brand? You want to understand the difference between ownership and producing? Uh, at Because your ownership allows you to, to produce a couple patented products uh, uh, and, and, and that kind of, we've got a template and a model out there now that we can all follow because you've done it with elegance, you've done it with class, and you've done it in a way that involves the people. So you're educating us along the way as you're doing. There are a lot of companies that have gone public, but they didn't do it in the public eye like you're doing and say, hey guys, follow me. Help me get there, and then I'm gonna make sure that we'll real well represent it while I'm there, and then I'm gonna have the blueprint available for anybody else who wants to get there. Because we didn't talk about today all of the other black-owned companies and producers that you're going to have stocked in your 500 stores who are small businesses now, but they might be right there next to you in the next five years, running through the same process. Hey. Here's how you set out everything up to get your pre uh, IPO, your 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 early phase, then take it yeah. public, get on Cortez show, right? He can help a little bit, right? No, that kind of stuff. So so yeah yeah it's yeah yeah media is is my thing, man. So it's it's coming, guys. So uh, I'll let you have the last words, man, because I I didn't I know there's a lot of stuff we didn't cover. Uh, this time because an hour and a half just isn't long enough for you and I. But but take take it from here. Take. I I do want you to know. Did you um you saw the the private Facebook group that I put you in? I know no. So so let me know what's going on with that. Um, okay. For those who invested, and I'm only doing it for the people that invested in Prince Street Views. So, mm-hmm. Um. I set up a pre, it's called pre and um, IPO, private investment um, equity group on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And I have to, I added you. So when you get okay. a chance, you go in there. All right. And what I've done is for those who invested, I told told them, you guys invested in believe and understand the process. So now I'm sharing with you what I invested. 
So gotcha. I have access to other IPOs mm -hmm. because I'm in that. So I've been throwing that in there, you know, gotcha. so people can see. So I'm sharing the information. That mm -hmm. way other people can build, mm -hmm. you know, their wealth with other companies just like how I invest. So I'm sharing that in there. And a couple of details, too. I'm going to bring this guy in that has, you know, because some of my vendors are in there just as well. Mm -hmm. Bringing this guy in who, who can bring, get credit for your company up to 200 grams in a year. Mm -hmm. You know, on how to use that system for corporate credit. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. So doing that. So definitely go in there. I invited you up because I saw that you got the invite, but you didn't check it off. Okay. But, okay. You know, but definitely do that. But I will get in there. Understand that this is just not. Listen, I'm doing Black Mama Black for five years, and that runs like an oil machine now. Mm -hmm. Now is Black Mama Teas and Cafes, mm -hmm. and you know I got my new crown that I put out the hemp teas yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the pumpkin mm -hmm. spice hemp teas nice. my own bio degree. Only when you're the only one in the market doing it, mm -hmm. you gotta scale really fast. Yeah. So in yeah. about two weeks I'm going to my to California to go get fingerprinted for my growers license. Mm -hmm. So that way, you know what, we're ready for when the weed or the cannabis industry becomes mm -hmm. completely legal federally, mm -hmm. at least we'll have those products. Right. In there just right. as well. And producing and growing your own and not yeah. again staying with the model that hey, either I'm sourcing direct from the farm or I am the farm. <laughs> right. Right. Because I'm gonna have a you know, a small location where we're doing indoor growing, you mm -hmm. know, of black mama weed and I'm gonna do a hybrid of a tea of some sort, like a green tea weed or something. I'm gonna mm -hmm. be working on that and put the patent on it. And then I can use the keep on the rest of the stuff to go into Black Mama Tea Pops because I've already kind of written the name. There you so, go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so all of that. So this is so as the industry change mm -hmm. and new products and new innovations happen in the industry, mm -hmm. we're going to be riding and doing that along, and we'll be creating our own industry just like with these hemp. Yeah. Because we own our stuff. So it, it, it's it's affordable in terms of people to get in mm -hmm. so that way they can also enjoy the ride and benefit from the success of this company because right. this is only going to go up so yeah. you know in a couple of weeks it's going to be moving real quick mm -hmm. you know and i'm going to close this you know i found out that i don't even have to hit the million because i already have money in another mm -hmm. um contingency so people just get in and definitely if you don't get in share it yeah you know but you definitely would want to get in you know and i would definitely give you guys updates i got another couple of more um big announcements coming yeah you know but i I'm can't just wait put this i can't word, wait nfl <laughs> Just, just three letters I'm going to throw out there. You can put them in any order you want to, but I'm going to put them in this order, NFL. Um, not saying that means anything to anybody out there, but I'm just saying I just chose to put these three random letters in this order. Uh, so if you understand this opportunity, so you're talking about an evaluation going skyrocketing. Man, that's 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 great. We're super super proud of you, and I know I speak for a lot of people. And I, I I'm on a different platform, so I can't really read the comments like I normally do. But I know you'll go back through the comments. I'll go back through the comments. A lot of people really really want to take this thing to another level. So we'll get a chance to schedule uh, that webinar, and we'll do it private, and we'll just have people register for it and come in, and then we'll you'll walk me through the process of doing my. Uh, investment and they show them how it all works and we can really give them some some insight in a closed uh, environment um, and, and really just take it to a whole nother level so I'm excited about that I'm excited about just knowing you and seeing everything that's going on uh, you taking us along this journey with you because I understand that you're well capitalized to uh, wefunder.com forward slash black mama tea and cafe this is where you yeah. can get your investment started uh, and once you are she's going to put you in a private Facebook group turn you on to some other information 
Uh, as an equity holder, man, you, there's some things that you need to learn. I learned a lot today, man. So uh, there are some things that she knows being on the other side of taking the company public and being an accredited investor almost all of her adult life. Uh, so she yeah, she true. got she got the she got to get. Listen, I don't think people get that. Almost your entire adult life, you've been either worth a million dollars or had two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in income. Uh, uh, so that is a significant feat in and of itself. So she's got insight that can help you build your net worth to that level and also helping you because she's got access to some things that you don't. She's sharing some of that stuff uh, and saying, hey, here's some things that, that you might want to know about. So this is this is incredibly, incredibly powerful. It's beautiful what you're doing. And I'm glad you allowed me to be a part of it and to, to help get the message out about Black Mama Tea and Cafe. And yes, I do have uh, my own studio uh, here in St. Louis. So uh, we'll be transitioning to a lot of different uh, shows. And of course, one of those shows will be a an investor show. So uh, we will continue to pump out the good news that you're feeding back to me so that we can continue to do that. Uh, okay, good luck. We're going to be, so then I'm going to get you to buy the land or let me get the land for free. So that yes. way you can build a studio for the community yes. and hire people. Yep. And then when you do economic development, let them give you a concession of a hundred grand. Because that's what I'm doing in Detroit. You nice. don't need to pay for the land. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to talk to you to do that. And then you build the studio and then build your channel and mm -hmm. then we'll invest into it. Nice. And then we'll take that stuff public. Just, nice. just do that and, and keep it going. Amen. Amen. From your mouth to God's ears, I received that. Uh, and I'm not like a lot of people, church people say they receive that and don't take any action. No, I received that and I'm about to get to work. <laughs> so I appreciate you guys. You know what's about to happen, y'all, man. We about to go. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. WeFunder.com. Black Mama Tea and Cafe, go ahead and get your five hundred dollars in, or your thousand, or your fifteen thousand, whatever you got, man. You guys can tell that this young lady knows her stuff, and she is connecting with the right people. And more and more people are looking to connect with her each and every day because of the position that she's putting herself in, and she wants you all, us all, to benefit from that. So let's take this ride, man. Let's go on this ride. So. I'm H. Cortez. She's Vanessa Braxton. You're tuning in to Talking Money in the Morning Live. Uh, until I talk to you next time, get your money up because you absolutely can do it. But more importantly, you deserve to do it, each and every one of you. Peace out. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. There we go.